Welcome to our treatment of the Sunday School lesson. Today's lesson is entitled, Standing Against False Teaching. And it's for Sunday, June the 2nd, 2024. Now I want to state a few things. First off, watching a YouTube presentation is not a substitute for solid, consistent Bible study. The, uh, and this particular series that I'm doing it uses the same title, scripture, and week sequence as the Sunday School Literature Radiant Life Adult Sunday School series published by the Assemblies of God. And you can order a copy of your of a Sunday School book by calling them at 855-642-2011. And also, too, I want to clearly state that YouTube is not a substitute for attending a church service as long as you're under normal circumstances. Now, uh, there are those of us who are ill and can't make it to church, and there are those of us who are taking care of someone who can't go to church. And that's basically what this YouTube presentation is for. Now, 1 Timothy 1, 5 through 7. The purpose of my instruction is that all believers would be filled with love that comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and genuine faith. But some people have missed this whole point. They have turned away from these things and spend their time in meaningless discussions. They want to be known as teachers of the law of Moses, but they don't know what they're talking about, even though they speak so confidently. And we often see that happening with people where they are so full of themselves and they really want to be the biggest shot that they possibly can. And they don't really understand how uh, the things in the Bible. And we have to be careful about that. We have to be careful not to fall under people like that. But more importantly, we want to be careful not to become someone like that. Now, 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 3. Now, the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last times, some will turn away from the true faith. They will follow deceptive spirits and teaching that come from demons. These people are hypocrites and liars, and their consciences are dead. They will say it is wrong to be married and wrong to eat certain foods, but God gr created those foods to be eaten with thanks by faithful people who know the truth. And we see this has happened repeatedly where different cults will crop up and they will come up with these really weird ideas about things they, that they prohibit that there's nothing wrong with, and the things that they should be prohibiting, they don't, usually don't. And the doctrines of demons, the devil getting in people, and we need to really understand that true heresy, a true heretic, is demon-inspired, and we need to be um, careful not to fool with people like that because they are under the influence of the devil. Okay, 1 Timothy 6, 3 through 6. Some people may contradict our teaching, but these are the wholesome teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. These teachings promote a godly life. Anyone who teaches something different is arrogant and lacks understanding. Such a person has an unhealthy desire to quibble over the meaning of words. They stir up arguments ending in jealousy, division, slander, and evil suspicion. These people always cause trouble. Their minds are corrupt, and they have turned their backs on the truth. To them, a show of godliness is just a way to become wealthy. Yet true godliness with contentment 
is itself great wealth. Now, you be careful of people that are really into money, that are really into preaching and teaching and getting people in their group. And the whole goal is to be wealthy and for them to get a big monetary payday. That is a number one sign of people that are uh, promoting ungodliness, uh, satanic uh, delusions. And it's not usually the people who are at the lower rungs of these groups. It's the people who are at the highest echelon of that particular group that are getting so wealthy. And you need to be careful and and avoid people like that. And the bottom line is, folks, is that if you are saved and you study your Bible consistently, that will help keep you from being sucked into some of these heresies. Absolutely, everybody needs to study the Bible their self. You do not depend on anyone to tell you everything that the Bible says. You dig in the Bible yourself, and you pray for God's wisdom and understanding. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 7. You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money, and they will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving, They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, love pleasure more than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. They are the kind who work their way into people's homes and win the confidence of vulnerable women who are burdened with the guilt of sin and controlled by various desires. Such women are forever following new teachings, but they are never able to understand the truth. Now, let me just underscore a few things about this. First off, the marks of a of a deceiver, of a false teacher, the marks of them are pride and self being self-centered, being selfish. Beware of anybody who gets up behind a pulpit and tries to con you in to giving over all your money for their benefit. Now, ever we should all be giving to the work of God and we should support ministers. Now, I've never been a paid minister, so I can say this with all freedom. Uh, there's We should be supporting the pastors of churches and making sure that they're family is able to eat and make sure they got a place to live and all like that. But let me tell you something. A pastor should not make way more than the average person in their church. It should be everybody pretty much all on the same level. If the pastor is driving a Rolls Royce and everybody else is driving 62 Dodge Darts, there's something seriously wrong with that. Now, 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5. I solemnly urge you in the presence of God in Christ Jesus, who will someday judge the living and the dead when he comes to set up his kingdom. Preach the word of God. Be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. For a time is coming 
when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. Okay? Now, we should, ministers, people in the ministry, we should feel free, we should feel free to rebuke and re correct and not be afraid of people. And if you've got a pastor who will not tell you the truth and will let you just live any old way, you've got a real problem on your hands because one of the missions, one of the purposes of having a shepherd is that they will correct people and they tell the truth, and sometimes the truth is very uncomfortable. Now, Titus 3, 8 through 11. This is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to insist on these teachings so that all who trust in God will devote themselves to doing good. These teachings are good and beneficial for everyone. Do not get involved in foolish discussions about spiritual pedigrees or in quarrels and fights about obedience to Jewish laws. These things are useless and a waste of time. If people are causing divisions among you, give a first and second warning. After that, have nothing more to do with them. For people like that have turned away from the truth and their own sins condemn them. And this is important for us to uh, understand that foolish arguing, going on trying to be the biggest shot in the room, and that's oftentimes how some of these Bible arguments devolve into of people trying to be the most knowledgeable. And if you see people that are doing that, uh, or if you see that in yourself, correct yourself, correct them, and get on the right path. Now, I want to thank you for spending a little time with us. If you need to get in touch with me, there's my phone number, 423-355-3859, or preferably, you can email me at donnybryson at gmail.com, or you can go to my website and check out my website at www.gospelmailbox.org. Well, friends, good Lord willing, I'll be back with you next weekend.